Hey, lords and ladies of geekdom, this is Dante D bringing you a tale of awe and wonder, one of excitement, mystery, and anticipation. I proudly present to you the world's greatest comic book collection. Unfortunately, it's not my comic book collection, but it is the world's greatest, and that is the Edgar Church Mile High Collection. Our tale starts in mid-January 1977 when a young comic book dealer of 21 years old named Chuck Rosansky received a call from a realtor. The realtor stated that the occupant of the house that he was trying to sell had just passed away and that his heirs were really, really anxious to get rid of this house. Unfortunately, there was a little problem. And yes, you probably guessed it. The thousands upon thousands of comic books that the previous occupant had stored in the basement. So the heirs of the estate wanted to get rid of the comic books so they could sell the house. If they weren't able to sell them, unfortunately, they probably would have thrown them out. So Mr. Rosansky took his big van to the house in the Denver area. He was immediately brought into the basement by the realtor and the heirs, and what he found were stacks and stacks of comic books laid all over the floor. What he found there were mostly EC Comics, some Dells, maybe some DC Comics as well. In the 1976 Overstreet Guide, they were probably worth maybe $20 at most, but there were a lot of them. So Mr. Rosansky offered the heirs a price per chicken box and when I was reading Mr. Rosansky's account of the discovery of this collection which he has on his Mile High website he described that back in the 1970s before they had comic book long boxes and short boxes people who were interested in collecting comic books actually stored their comic books in old boxes that were reserved for frozen poultry. <laughs> Unfortunately the exact amount of money that Mr. Rosansky spent overall for this collection was not disclosed in his account of the discovery. However, there are some other uh, sources on the internet that estimate he maybe spent about $1,500 for the whole collection, which at the time in the 1970s was a, still a lot of money. So the heirs accepted Mr. Rosansky's offer. They told him, okay, fine, we'll accept your offer, but you have to clear all these comic books off of the ground, but you also have to empty out the closet closet? What closet? At the beginning of the story, we were told that there were just a bunch of Western comics and horror comics all over the floor. No one said anything about a closet. When it was opened up, what he found were stacks and stacks of comic books from the floor all the way up to the ceiling and they were crammed in there tight. They were an extraordinary find. What he described were every single superhero comic book published from the 1940s on, from what he could see anyway. In Mr. Rosansky's account of the discovery, he explained that when he saw what was in this closet, his mouth became so dry that he asked for a glass of water. When they brought him the glass of water, they gave it to him and he was so transfixed on these comics that when he went to take a sip from his glass, he actually missed entirely and water spilt on the floor. Thankfully, no water got on the comic books. Mr. Rosansky took two hours that day to stuff his van full of 10,000 comic books. Unfortunately, his van didn't have enough room to fit all the comic books. Like I said, he fit 10,000 in there. 8,000 actually remained that day. And yes, you guessed it, the better books remained that day. You see, the heirs of the estate of the house that was being sold wanted all of the books that were on the floor cleared out first, and then the closet. That day, just imagine those 8,000 superhero golden age books were left at this house. And Mr. Rosansky couldn't even go back the next day because the heirs were not gonna be available for the rest of the week. Mr. Rosansky had to wait a full week before he could go back and finish claiming his found treasure. 
This part of the story is actually pretty hilarious. You see, Mr. Rosansky describes that something was going wonky with his transmission that day and he wasn't able to put his van in drive. What he had to do was put his uh, van to second gear and he had to drive all the way back from the Denver area all the way to Colorado uh, at about 35 miles per hour. I, uh, that must have been so nerve wracking. I mean, there were probably people behind him honking and really getting angry with him and he had all these comic books in the back like that just must have been wicked so a very nervous week went by mr rosansky describes that he had feelings and fear that the heirs uh were going to throw out the rest of the books because they were in a real huge hurry to sell this house for some reason let's just take a second can you imagine if those books were thrown out oh that would have been a travesty well, the books weren't thrown out, and the next week, Mr. Rosansky went back and loaded up the rest of the 8,000 comics, and those 8,000 being amongst the best of the find. We're talking Action Comics number one, Detective Comics 27, Marvel Comics number one, and so many more. First appearance of Green Lantern, Flash Comics number one, like, can you just imagine if someone were to find these comics nowadays? So this clearly was an amazing find, but who was this person who amassed this huge collection of comic books? Well, my friends, his name was Edgar Church, and he was not only a prolific collector of comic books, but also a career artist. It said that he did illustrations for phone books and certain magazine covers, and he liked to buy comic books to use as references for his work. Mr. Rosansky describes that the heirs had a lot of antipathy towards anything that was paper in the house. You can only imagine that Mr. Church's comic book collecting habit must have put a huge strain on the family finances. You gotta think, at one time, this man was purchasing pretty much every single superhero comic in print. And in the 1940s and 50s, the newsstands and the mom and pop shops, they were filled with comic book superheroes. One can assume that Mr. Church himself had a huge attachment to his comic book collection and was genuinely a comic book fan. Mr. Rosansky, in his account of this discovery, described that Mr. Church on that walk-in closet actually had a padlock. You can assume that Mr. Church shared his comic books with nobody, not even his children. And one thing I think I forgot to mention was that the comic books that were found in this closet were not only some of the most sought after comic books of all time, but they also were in pretty much near mint condition. Mr. Rosansky describes that these books probably were not even read. So why should we care about the Edgar Church collection? I mean, it is an entertaining tale, but is this discovery important to the comic book collecting hobby as a whole? And the answer is, Yes, it is super important to the comic book collecting hobby. This is what actually gave the whole hobby of collecting comic books a huge, huge boost. Back in the 1970s, comic book collecting was still very much in its infancy. You see, collecting comic books also kind of started that whole speculation aspect of comic book collecting as well. How do you ask? Well, once Mr. Rosansky made this discovery, immediately he did try to start selling off some of this collection and the books that he sold certainly were not cheap. Even in the 1976 Overstreet Price Guide, a lot of those early appearances of heroes such as Superman and Batman were still a lot of money. The discovery of this collection also is what gave Mile High Comics a huge boost. And we all know that Mile High Comics, which was Mr. Rosansky's business, was a very prolific dealer of back issue comic books. Those of you that were reading comic books in the 1980s probably remember those huge full page ads in Marvel Comics for Mile High Comics and with those huge lists of books that they were selling. For those of you that think that selling off the Mile High collection was easy for Mr. Rosansky. Well, part of it was. If you've ever tried selling comic books before, you'll know that finding those fans for that particular comic book can take a long time. In fact, 
A good handful of the books of the Mile High collection were not even sold off up until a few years ago. Can you imagine? Mr. Rosansky had some of those books that he found in the original Edgar Church Mile High collection from 1977 all the way up until about 2010, 2011. That is a long time to be selling off a whole collection. Not that it's Mr. Rosansky's fault. Some of the books that were in the collection certainly were more niche books that only particular fans would really want to find. It is estimated that the Edgar Church collection, if found today, would be worth well over $50 million. So what are your thoughts on the Edgar Church collection? Do you know of any other comic book finds that are just as great as the Edgar Church collection? Do you think that a find like the Edgar Church collection is possible today? If you do think so, please let me know in the comments. Also, I did my research for this video by reading Mr. Rosansky's account of his find on his milehigh.com website. But if there are any other tidbits or uh, fun facts about the find of this collection that you know about that I did not mention in this video, please, in the comments, let me know. If you like this video about the Edgar Church Mile High collection, please, hit that like button and please consider subscribing for brand new videos published weekly on topics relating to geek culture. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. Ciao.